No one wants to see a kid with arthritis, but it happens. But do kids really get RA? Well, not exactly. When a child gets arthritis, it's not RA, but JIA, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It's not called RA because it's very much not RA. We're going to get into the four biggest ways JIA differs from RA, and then talk about how you can thrive with JIA as a kid and as an adult. Yep, adults can have JIA too. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Let's start with the basics. What is juvenile idiopathic arthritis? Well, it's partly in the name. Juvenile indicates it happens in kids, specifically those under 16. But as I said in the beginning, adults can have it as kids tend to grow up. Idiopathic simply means we don't know what causes it, and arthritis, well, is arthritis, inflammation of the joints. JIA, similar to RA, is a systemic inflammatory autoimmune arthritis. This means it impacts every part of the body and is a result of the immune system going haywire and attacking itself. There are different types of JIA as are listed here. Now, for the sake of simplicity and trying to keep this video from being hours long, I'll be talking mostly about the oligoarticular and polyarticular types of JIA, and we'll just use the term JIA to discuss both. Oligoarticular JIA only impacts a few joints in an asymmetric pattern. So think of something like a right knee, a left ankle, and then a right knuckle. Polyarticular JIA affects more than just a few joints and tends to be symmetric, so both wrists or both knees. This list of different types of JIA are actually very different, and although I said I wouldn't go through each one, I do want to highlight the systemic JIA is something else entirely. There is an arthritis component, but also kids will get very high fevers and rashes, and it's actually considered an auto-inflammatory condition as opposed to autoimmune. Each type has their own special features, which help the docs diagnose them. And so who are these docs? Well, JIA is typically cared for by pediatric rheumatologists. These are specialists who completed medical school and pediatric residency and then decided to specialize in rheumatology. There are less than 500 of these specialists in the United States, so they are a rare breed indeed. And unfortunately, it's not uncommon to have real difficulty finding an appointment with one. If that's you, I'll have some recommendations for you at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. So as I was saying, each type of JIA has its own collection of findings that help make a diagnosis. But still, diagnosing JIA, like a lot of autoimmune conditions, is tricky. And our main reason for this is actually Actually our first big difference between JIA and RA, and that is that most types of JIA will not have a positive rheumatoid factor blood test. Most types of JIA are seronegative or without a positive blood autoantibody. And I just talked about seronegative arthritis in my recent Q&A video, so check that out if you want to learn more. Some do have a positive rheumatoid factor, specifically those with the polyarticular type, but even then it's only about half the time. Not having a blood test to hang your hat on on can certainly make diagnosing anything more challenging. And although I'm always stressing the importance of looking beyond the blood test, having that result certainly provides an anchor to work from when figuring something out. It's not like JIA has its own antibodies to check either, so we really are just left to our diagnostic skills. Making a diagnosis of JIA gets even more complicated, which brings us to our second big difference between JIA and RA, which is that this is going to seem obvious, the diagnosis of JIA is done in kids, and kids, physiologically speaking, are different from adults. Kids are not just little adults. How a doctor thinks about and goes after a diagnosis in a kid with swollen knee and wrists is going to be very different than how they do that same thing in an adult. Sure, there are some similarities, but with kids, we have to think very broadly and make sure we aren't missing something like cancer or an infection. A thorough doctor will also be thinking about these things with an adult, but the evidence pointing away from those possibilities will be obvious pretty quick. So the doc can confidently check them off their list. But in kids, sometimes the evidence isn't that obvious, so pediatric rheumatologists have to go hunting. This usually means more tests. More tests can mean biopsies, x-rays of every joint, and of course, 
tons of blood tests. Once a diagnosis is made, the difference doesn't end there. When caring for someone with RA, we have to keep an eye out on their joints clearly, but we're also thinking about their bone and their heart health. When caring for someone with JIA, we have to keep an eye on, well, their eyes. People with JIA have a higher risk of developing uveitis than those with RA, and depending on the type of JIA and blood test results, they may have such a high risk they need to proactively screen for it with regular eye exams. Uveitis is inflammation within the eye and can happen in many different autoimmune conditions or just by itself. But when someone has JIA, we have to pay particular attention to it. How we think about treatment also differs. Treatment in rheumatoid arthritis and really any autoimmune condition follows a particular strategy that is based on the basic fact that RA is not curable. It is assumed that the person will need some sort of treatment for the majority of their life. In JIA, treatment decisions are more nuanced because in many types of JIA, the disease may go away as the kid gets older. They grow out of it, as it were. This means that it doesn't end up being a lifelong condition for them. This is most likely to happen in those with oligoarthritis JIA who don't have any positive autoantibody tests. Those with polyarticular JIA who have a positive rheumatoid factor, it doesn't tend to go away. This condition tends to act like rheumatoid arthritis and follow someone well into adulthood, thus creating adults with JIA. Like I said earlier, in a perfect world, everyone would be seeing their pediatric rheumatologist, but unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world and oftentimes people with JIA don't have access to this level of specialist. So they may end up seeing someone like me, an adult rheumatologist who famously wrote up an entire report over a rash that turned out to be a diaper rash while in training. What's wrong with you? So here are some conversation starters for you to discuss with your PCP or adult rheumatologist that may bridge that specialty gap if you can't get in for your regular visits with a pediatric rheumatologist. So is it growing pains? I've heard more stories than I'd like that start with, they just said it was growing pains. Generally speaking, growing pains are going to be worse in the evening or may even wake you up from sleep. They will get worse with that Activity and you won't notice very much joint swelling despite having a lot of pain. The pain from JIA will be worse in the morning, will be associated with a lot of joint swelling, and will generally be better as you move or warm up. When is it time to see a specialist? When it comes to JIA, if you've been having unexplained joint swelling that either persists or even travels to different joints, it's time to see a specialist. And parents, if you notice that your kid is not your kid anymore, they aren't as active as they used to be, and I've even heard it described as their are not as carefree, then it's time to have someone take a closer look. Do you have JIA and are seeing an adult rheumatologist? This is not uncommon given the rarity of pediatric rheumatologists, but you want to make sure you're getting the same kind of attention that you would get with a peds rheumatologist. Ask your doctor if you need an eye exam and if you need repeat joint x-rays to ensure that there's no damage. Remember, you have a long life ahead of you, so we want to be extra careful to avoid joint damage. And finally, a word about why I will always advocate to do what you can to see at least once a pediatric rheumatologist. Sure, adult trained rheumatologists can learn about JIA and prescribe the correct medications, but it's everything else about being a kid, a teenager, or a young adult with JIA that adult doctor's offices aren't great at addressing. Issues that come up at school or with friends, sex ed and education and career planning, helping you and your parents prepare to leave the nest and start your own life. Pediatric rheumatologists tend to work in association with children's hospitals who have resources to help maneuver these complex issues. If you don't live close to this type of facility, look up your state's or your neighboring state's children's hospital and see what their orthopedic or rheumatology department offers in the way of programs or camps. The Arthritis Foundation also has great resources for young people with arthritis as well as community groups. And finally, check out Got Transition. Transition is the time during which someone with J AIA will move from the pediatrician's office to an adult trained doctor. This is usually happening while they are going to college or getting their first big job or moving out of the house. These are all huge moments and you don't want your health to take a back seat. Got Transition has great resources to help you and your family navigate these times. I also did a video specifically about transition if you want to learn more. I hope you found this helpful and answered some of your questions about JIA and how it's different from RA. Please like, subscribe, and share this with anyone you think could use this info and we'll see you next time.